Welcome, Welcome to Nintendo Voice <laughs> Chat for the week of October 15, 2015. I am your one-armed host, Jose Otero, <laughs> and we are here with another fun episode of IGN's Nintendo Show, the one you know and love. Joining me this week, Per Schneider. I am too armed today. Oh, yeah. all right. I'm, and I'm whole. Fresh from the valleys of New Jersey. Hey, <laughs> Brian Altano. Brap, brap. Technically, Captain, I'm always fresh. Captain from the... Braps <laughs> joining us. It's good to be back. I feel like I haven't been on the show in a while. I, yeah, it, it was awesome. Sometimes. I want to clarify for the people. Thank you. I want to clarify for the people listening to the show. You have both arms. You one of them is just hurt. One yeah. one's broken. One oh, one's broken. broken. Yeah. But you didn't lose. You didn't physically. Out. So oh, you took your, oh, he took his bionic arm thing mm -hmm. off. That's yeah, right. It's, okay, cool. It's fun. You can well, play video games in that thing now, right? Can definitely, oh, yeah. So that's fine. all that matters. We can definitely take him now. All right. All right, cool. <laughs> so we have a lot to talk about today, uh, and this is going to be a very Zelda-focused episode. Not really just on Triforce Heroes, but it seems like Zelda is just all up in the news this yep. week. Uh, so there's a lot to discuss. We are going to try and keep it spoiler-free, though, when we talk about Triforce Heroes. But this week on the show... Why Zelda Triforce Heroes will test your best friend and worst friendships, possibly. Yeah. And that it's okay to go alone in Zelda Triforce Heroes. We're going to talk a little bit about single oh, yeah. player. Uh, and I also want to ask you guys, do we really want Twilight Princess HD? There's been a lot of talk and speculation. Uh, Toys R Us exclusives for Amiibo and how the exclusives are actually getting easier to find. I can still walk hmm. into Target and find mm -hmm. them. Uh, the mysterious Nintendo mobile game draws near. Uh, maybe we'll do some guesswork on that and more. So let's start with... Zelda Triforce Heroes, again, we're going to keep this spoiler free to the best of our ability because honestly, we want you to enjoy this as well. Uh, we're going to start from multiplayer angle. You were going to say something. How do you even spoil free. that game? It's not know. like People it's a like story based game. It's it's definitely it's not an epic quest. It's a mm. it's a fun action multiplayer. No, game, right? you're not finding like yeah. silly side missions or things like that. Sure. But there is a very silly tone to it all. That's really fun. Ooh. This this fashion angle um, and that the Hytopia, at least the soundtrack when you're running around, sounds like France. Uh, just very very uh, very interesting. Uh, yeah, everything's about fashion. And uh, things like to that. me, it, it sort of evokes the town in Minish Cap a little bit. Like I actually sort of feel that kind of weird whimsy that I think uh, there was a, a slightly more serious tone in uh, even Link Between Worlds or even most Zelda games. And I don't feel like that's really here, uh, here uh, for this game. There isn't that really like major threat, that impending doom. It feels kind of like. Uh, the the DS Zeldas in that way, yeah. where it was I'm sort of a witch who's known for f her fashion sense for like yeah. being very like yeah. well dressed and evil. And it's not a coming of age quest. It's not like no. Link is here and he must rise to become a hero. It's like, hey everybody, we need your help. Come, come one, come you fit all. The description, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. You fit, you, you've got sideburns. Which That's is actually like, what they say. <laughs> which is like, it's it's a very it's a very goofy setup, yep. and I think that really sets a tone for the way uh, the whole game unfolds. And I went into this thinking this is going to play out kind of like Four Swords did yeah. where the story is this like very loose charade for the fact that they really just want you to jump into the levels um, and I was actually greeted with the reality that it's a little more than that like they actually built the entire world around this story and this premise which I really like and that actually that hook is what gets you uh, into the gameplay, what ba basically makes you want to collect the outfits and all this stuff yeah. like that is that it's ba the whole game is really about style <laughs> Yeah, which well, is well, and the fashion has function. And yeah, that, uh, yeah, it's funny because they kind of joke that fashion is never finished because uh, you're constantly finding more and more outfits uh, to use. And so I, you know, we played in multiplayer, and I feel like I've done the most homework on the fashion front because I have an outfit for almost every situation. Jeez. But I feel like the the game sort of. <laughs> It, it sort of attacks, um, at least to me, it attaches itself to your inner completionist a little bit. Because, like, do you want the outfits or do you just want to push forward? There's no, you're not at a disadvantage for playing through in the hero's clothes. Yeah. But if you have the Goron garb, it's kind of nice to swim in lava and not have to worry about that while you're trying to work with other people. I, I like that this, this, this game has created the context in which I got to hear you say for the first time that I'm the person that's done the most fashion homework. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's, not, that's not a right usual now at this table. But no. That's not a usual Jose Otero line to drop. But the outfits yeah. also play into the kind of the quest-based nature of this game. I mean, it is yes. the the town is very much the hub, almost like you know, in, like in a game like Destiny, where mm. you get these kind of side missions assigned 
assigned to you, only mm -hmm. that every mission is a side mission. But when you come back and you talk to the king, he, he'll, act, he'll actually acknowledge what you did. He'll yeah. say, oh, you slew this boss and you did this and this and this. And so there is this sense that you're working towards something. And then each mission, of course, has a, a standard way of finishing it, right? Like working together with your friends or playing it single player or mm -hmm. like some of the side quests, right? Uh, yeah. Like you can... Well, when you say side quests, you're talking about the additional challenges that yeah. you can check off that are essentially like, for example, finish this level with less hearts. So if you start with eight heart Fewer. containers, you only have four. Fewer, yep. excuse me. Um, you also have protect the orb. You'll have uh, certain time, time limits. restrictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's Only interesting. Use bombs. There was one that said in, in survive through the darkness, like or through the dark, and yeah. I'm just like, what does that mean? Yeah, like, right. I, I wanted to try it, but I, I kind of got sidetracked. Um, so now these are all based on the 32 dungeons that are in this game. 32 levels, that's right. And each world ends with a token temple. Yeah. Like, so you'll have a fire temple, uh, a snow temple, a water temple, etc. Yeah. And it's basically every four stages. Yeah, the fourth There's stage those, is always right? the one. And the fourth area is also where you're either fighting a boss or you're just fighting... Uh, sort of an extreme challenge against enemies. Oh, I, I like, use extreme lightly. It's actually kind of easy. Well, yeah, it's part. sort of like a boss event, right? Like yeah. it's either a big bad creature that you have to fight where he comes out and it has his name on the bottom, like you're playing Ocarina of Time or something yeah. like that. Uh, or there's ones where it's just like you got to kill 25 uh, waves of increasing enemies. Yeah. But, but, ki but killing those things with your friends online is what really shows off the emote system and how the emotes do work for communication to a degree. Um, yeah. We So we, we basically played last night um, I sent around text messages saying we're going to play in silence. We're not going to do a group hangout. Let's see how this works. And there were some there were some uh, debates. Okay, so this <laughs> in the is middle of the emotes. So this is where we're talking about you know the new Zelda game turning friends into enemies, right? Yeah, yeah because uh, I had moments where I didn't like either of you guys. Oh, I didn't like you either. Um, <laughs> I don't like you either. <laughs> You'll be dead. Um, yeah, and the emotes just made it worse mm. because you are you're an emo troll. Jose Who, Otero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of pom poms, a lot of thumbs up, a lot of no. So you have these. What is it like? Eight tiles. Eight on the tiles screen. at the bottom mm -hmm. that are basically your only way of communicating with people when you're playing online. You're not sitting in the same room, <laughs> and sometimes it works really well. Like, and it's it's actually really cool because I don't really see a lot of a lot of online games like this where you can kind of just be like good job nice work or Thumbs over up. here or over and you here. see the bubble hanging over where you need to go yeah yeah but there's also like the there's one that's like no or this like really puzzled frustrated one where link's just like that and there's this like curly oh, no, scratch that's above like his the head my bad uh, that's the my, like my bad oh my i bad did i owe my for emote. me it was like what the hell do you want me to do oh, oh. no 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 really? like, I, that's I, how i was so, treating it like so that it's funny because they replaced that tile i feel on the japanese one on the japanese one his hands are folded like prayer and it's yeah, almost like i'm sorry gomene sorry yeah. yeah and the american one he's just he's shrugging like ah. it's, well because we don't have sorry in our vernacular in america it's all we my bird Basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but nice. he, um, yeah, the, uh, Interesting. somehow no doesn't express the frustration when Jose yes, throws you no. on purpose into a fiery pit for the fifth time. So wait, I, um, yes. yeah, so I was causing trouble, but I was oh, causing trouble bit. to kind of point out that <laughs> you can't always control who you're playing with. No. no. And they are going to be unpredictable. So I was trying to be as unpredictable as possible with you both. Actually, in our first ma match, I quit the mission just to see what would happen because we knew at E3 it would kick us all out. Yeah. But I wanted to see what. And on your 3DS, Brian, and, uh, you yeah. told me it said... It, so your your link popped up. You were the green one. And it said, Jose, and it had your name. And it said, sorry, something came up. I got to run. Yeah, and yeah. then and Brian, I'm like, <laughs> I got to do something. Yeah. So I start texting Jose. I'm like, where the hell are you? Did you go on to play Destiny or something yeah, like that? Like, if you did, I hate you so yeah, much. Yeah, I'm going to be really I, mad. I time for this. Um, no, I just wanted to see what would happen. Actually, I wanted wow. to change outfits what a, um, what a, at the start. Which, so we're like the, where the control group yeah, is. Yeah, no, experience. exactly. Yeah. That's like, right. Yeah, you, a lot you, of things. You did so, your job. So that explains. So you weren't actually that bad at the puzzles. You were just testing us. Yeah. No, is that what uh, you're saying? we were disagreeing on some puzzles because you were, for example, at one point you were telling us to push a block a certain way. Yeah. And, and you guys and kept on pulling on it. I'm like, are you guys? Well, so this is what I realized, and I was talking to Jose about Man. this this morning, and it's really, it's really funny that they kind of based around this triangle, these the Triforce, three players, three heroes. Uh, that's the literally in the title. Um, three people historically, narratively, 
uh, never the best idea. Like you get three <laughs> people together, two gang up on one, three people become isolated, they hate each other. There's always two against one. It's very rare where three people are in perfect the Musketeers synchronicity. Disprove this entire thing. Right. Well, well right. then, was D'Artagnan was the fourth one. Exactly. They needed balance. Exactly. Yeah. Look at the three stooges. They were just constantly know, beating each other up. What about so, the three amigos? Three amigos, same thing. So I remember sitting back and going, uh, I, okay, there's, there's a feud happening here between Pear and Jose. Now I could step in and help Jose. But it's. I know that Jose's pissed off right now. I can see it in his face, <laughs> and I know that Paris smiling. And I was sitting there. Now I'm playing the game uh, in in my living room next to my wife, who's watching a TV show, and I'm laughing maniacally at my me 3ds, yeah. which is not something you see very no, often, right? I don't yeah. like, usually look at my 3ds and start laughing hysterically, and I'm laughing maniacally. And she's sitting next to me, and she's like, "What's going on?" And I'm like, "I'm like, oh my my boss keeps throwing my coworker into the lava in the new Zelda game." And my she's favorite like, is like this. Brian head just pops up with thumbs up. I'll yeah, oh, every I time you threw him in, yeah, I was like, I thumbs up, one. good work, good work. No, and there was a time I threw you, and I think you did the same. You were turned coat. Like, you also turned to my side and cheered when I tossed Pear Every off. now and then. Well, it was whoever, yeah. whoever, whoever was. Yeah, it was totally. He, so he I, think, knows where to... I think our most frustrating moment the entire time was now the each box? one. The box, yeah. by yeah. far. So yeah. there's a. There's I really a, did not like you guys when we were pushing the box. There's a fire oh, yeah, stage. Yeah, so there's yeah. a fire stage where, in classic Zelda terminology, there's a big box, a big thing you have to drag, a big statue-shaped thing you have mm -hmm. to drag around, and there's fire shooting out of the ground, so you have to pull this thing at the right time so the fire doesn't hit you. <laughs> now, you all share <laughs> health. Yeah, and when you hit, get hit with the fire, your ass light, lights up, jumps and up you, in the you air. And you run super and fast. And you run around. And it's like, you can, you can then fall off the platform yeah. on top so of that. So, yeah. without us being able to yell at each other, all right, let's all get at the bottom of this box, uh, you see Jose run to one side, and Perrin and I are like, that's the wrong side. So we run to the other side, and which doesn't work, because then you have one person pulling on one side, Two people pulling on the other. You need well, all and three. I would not move. You wouldn't because you're so. I was gonna bend you guys to my will. You and were I so did. stubborn. You and you're jamming eventually. the come over here, come over here, and we're like, no, you come over here. <laughs> again, and then, again, I, this was all for science. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just so I, I, put that I tried out there. to. I, I kept on like saying like no, and then yeah. going to where the box should move and going with the sword like. <laughs> I think I picked you it up felt and like, threw you and off. And then you threw that. me yeah. off. I'm it like, felt what? like training a dog yeah. where you're just like, nope, that's bad. bad. Go okay, over here, but then, here. But then, in an interesting <laughs> twist, Pear spotted a chest that was higher up, and he wanted to use the box to get to it, and you and I didn't see it. So we <laughs> wanted to just push it so we can solve the puzzle. He wanted to push it so we can get the rupees. Also... Uh, Pear was the worst, most annoying Zelda player because he has this bad habit of picking you up and throwing you where he wants you to be. And the thing is, in, in this game, it makes me laugh to no end that your will to move can be taken away at a moment's notice yep, yep. by someone else. So Pear will like pick you up and just take you towards an enemy, and you have to put together in the next two seconds, start swinging your sword, or you're gonna hit that yeah. enemy. All of a sudden, he's like, "Hey, uh, I need you," and you're like, "Wait." What? And you get scooped up in the air, and it's just like, you better hit that thing. Oh. Well, that's the, but, that's but the, the commu problem. But the limited communication adds to a lot of the hilarity. It's I feel funny. like when we yeah. played locally, we still had some of it, but there was something funnier about the emotes being the only way to express because, themselves. Because you're so powerless. Like, you have to trust that what the other player is doing is for good, yeah. which, to be fair, when we started was never the case. No, right? like we, But, like, you pick up an enemy, and th at that point, the enemy, th uh, you pick up a player, and the player thinks, wait, does he want me to grab that rupee up there? Does he want me to get? Uh, is he yeah. going to throw me up no to the control hearts? control right? over the situation. Yeah. All I could do is spam no to tell you. So to I, and down. I actually, I actually found a lot of that frustrating. But in like, in like not in a I want to quit this game kind of way, but in like a man, this is. I wish there was My a better. Teams. I wish My there was more um, emojis to spam these guys with. Oh uh, wait, but so, I'm wondering. Hang on, your exact quote was, "I wish there were two emojis." What the hell, man? Uh, yeah, and I hate us. <laughs> 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 anyway, but, go ahead. So I'm wondering if uh, my experience and all of our experience differs because I know you guys so well. And yeah. I'm like, Jose is playing stubborn because he's stubborn. And Pear's being a prankster because that's the way he is. He's being a troll because he because that's you're you laughing right now. It's surprisingly safe. I was, I was and that. I was gonna be like, I gotta be the mid, I gotta be the the, yeah. the clean you, guy. You, you know, being very, I'm the straight man polite. in the group so, here. So another moment moment I want to point out is mm. there's this kind of minecart roller coaster. Wait, wait, sequence. before you move forward, we did eventually solve the box puzzle, oh, yeah. and it was kind of fun when we finished it. All you saw was a bunch of thumbs up yeah. and pom yeah. poms all over the place. I just want folks to hear and that. And even after you die, like sometimes you try to beat a boss and you die and you have 
to redo the dungeon after you lose all your lives and like when you then finally beat the boss it's just like it's satisfying it's, it's awesome. really satisfying yeah. the, the emojis are yeah. flying I, just, yeah. I don't really want people good. to think we just had a horrible no, time because no, we no. didn't we but actually had a no, pretty good no, time no 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 I don't think that I don't even the, think that's what's coming off from the story at all like okay. I, it's we had that it was that it, it's, I haven't really felt this since playing uh, New Super Mario Brothers the first time where mm. you're like we're working together but we are also fighting each other over things and I think the way this differs is that we share health so you can be a troll but ultimately it's going to be to your own deficit because you're going or detriment because you're going to be killing yourself off the yeah. emote troll yeah. yeah and I think it's like that's the other thing spamming spamming the, the emotes was so much fun like and especially doing them the wrong way or every time like something good or bad happened just being like pump 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 yes 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 pump 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 <laughs> and you would see them blow up on the screen and every single time one of us uh, would accomplish something all three of us would be like yeah we'll and start spamming and them. it's even better with the, the thumbs up goes yeah, has a little like pergin music mm-hmm. uh, melody yeah. in it when you spam it really yeah. fast. But what was your second story? No, so the, the second thing was the uh, was the the roller coaster, the um, the minecart, right? They, yeah. There are multiple kind of stages like that, and one you're on this thing, it goes in circles. Mm. The boomerang guys have to hit a switch. I had no, actually, the arrow can hit the switch really? too. Yeah, you did hit the switch at one point. You didn't know. I checked in single player. You can't hit the switch. Okay, well, it yeah. seemed like I you couldn't. blamed us for it, and so you did. Yeah, I, I kept on waiting <laughs> for you guys to hit that damn switch, and you guys kept on missing. Well, and, that's, and you're like, I kept on going, item, no, item, no, yeah, item, yeah. no. Yeah. Or uh, yeah, there was, um, and we were like, no, no, no. yeah, no. The, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it like, was a queen video. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, queen no, 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 no. But there was a Mama totem. Mia. Item, totem, item, totem, item. <laughs> Just listen to me. Like, it was so no, funny. I, I am not lying to you. There were multiple times where I was about to pick up my phone and call you guys and be like, pick up the thing and shoot the thing on the wall. I was so, so I was so ready to scream at you guys so over this. We fought a, then to, today we fought a boss locally, um, this time be, <laughs> talking to each other. It, it was a ton of fun. I think the funniest part to me in boss fights is when the boss stacks up to a second layer or yep. a third layer. Yep. Because at that point, the picking people up in that game is really the the Zelda Triforce Heroes trust fall. Yeah. Like you have to trust them, and you said this a little bit earlier, but you have to. If that person on the other side doesn't have your best intentions or is just going to throw you off the stage and troll, that's, it, it kind of ruins the experience, for lack of a better way to yeah. say it. Um, but the game is so well designed on the puzzle front that it feels like someone always has a job to do, especially in stages where everyone has a different item. Yeah. When we all have the same one, it's not quite as fun. No. But when you get to the later stuff where like you have the gust jar, which by the way was hilarious the that you ended up with that. Uh, because oh, side, Tara and I side grabbed note. the boomerang and the arrows I'm gonna, I'm gonna call. I'm going to call it right now. Uh, the <laughs> gust jar is going to be the least wanted item in this game. And I could tell, because every time a level opened up, it was like, oh, you can get the, the, the you know, the arrows, you can get the bombs. We would dash. Gust, gust jar, it was like going to the supermarket at, like at, in The Walking Dead. You're we like, oh, this is being picked clean. There's nothing left for it me here. It was really funny. Like, we both, <laughs> Jose and I both dashed to the weapons, yeah. grabbed them, and then you came and you saw it was only the gust jar. And, and I it was just like, hit the no button. And I was just was like, like, no, no, no. Yeah. We also uh, we played with a um, friend of the show, Jeremy Parrish, as well, um, before uh, we had played online with Brian and had a similar experience where everyone rushed to grab something. Also, we found out that, like, I so I had the bomb suit. And so when you have the bomb suit made, whenever you touch another bomb, it doubles in size. But it also doubles the explosion. But you can kill your friends by accident. So if oh, I great. throw that bomb in an area and someone doesn't get clear. Yeah. And Jeremy made the mistake of picking the bare minimum, so he was losing two hearts oh. every time he got hit. See, and but this is the so problem was, because like rough. my favorite suit, because I really like playing with the arrows, was go, was the Kokiri. the Kokiri suit, which gives you the the classic triple arrow, right? Which yeah. was an old upgrade for for and arrows and Link Between yep. Worlds and Link to the Past. Um, so I would come in with this Kokiri suit, being like, I can't wait to get that arrow and get through, shoot three of them. And they were like, nah, man, you get the windbag. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah, no, and that's a problem, too, because, well, so if you pick up an item and someone has your item, I don't know if there's a way to negotiate right now. No. Like, there doesn't seem to be. But that person, if they grab another item, they put the other one down. Yes. So you can switch, but once all three items have been picked up, everyone is stuck with them. They are yeah. stuck so with them. So if you came prepared with a certain outfit and someone beat you to the hammer, let's say... Like well, SOL that, is the problem, and that, that's a shame. And it becomes a it becomes a little bit of a, a trust game. And I my my one criticism it's the same with Splatoon is that they don't give you a good look at the loadouts in advance, right? Mm-hmm. Like you want to start the level, and I want to go 
oh no, you know, maybe Brian is going to pick this other thing. It sometimes goes really fast and everybody's yeah. got the same Well, the you same see suit. the items in the stage, but yeah. what you're saying is the, in, in the, the build up to it, you can't like be like dibs, like give me this one yeah. please because I'm going to bring this out. Well, how about this? As responsible adults, we can have a conversation right now. That how about the next time we play, we walk into this area and there's three items in all in a row. Let them have the Why don't charm. we just kind of like space it out a little bit and walk up and kind of stand near one, maybe swing our sword a little bit. Someone can say yes or no. Yeah. Oh, that sounds terrible. That sounds yeah. Awful. Okay, no, that's like never, that. no. Yeah, what you're going to do is just run up there and leave no, me with yeah. the yeah. No, you get the window. You can have the jump the uh, gust jar. No. The best thing um, about gust jar is so, that I can shoot you guys across the room. We have not talked about the though the one uh, the the white elephant in the room, <clears throat> the lag. We did experience lag last night. We did local we and online. Local yeah. and online. Locally, I know that uh, I've seen cases, and uh, with Smash 3DS <clears throat> where like local Wi-Fi or something like you start to get some lag between the players. In download play, we had a little bit of it. Online, we had a little <laughs> bit of it, and it's a little um, disturbing. It could be just the way Nintendo sets up their their online like this seems to be peer to peer like this isn't doesn't seem to be a dedicated server yeah kind of it, was, game. it was interesting because we played what two rounds three rounds together last night and yeah, the first one was laggy the first one was laggy the second one was like the first half was a complete slideshow and then it mm -hmm. cleaned up and then the third one was almost went off without a hiccup yeah it was perfect. so i don't know what the yeah. factors were like i was asking jose this morning like if he had something else going on in his apartment we did you know, like francisco uh, was playing destiny in the other room at one point we were both online uh on our devices. Yeah, I mean, well, you had, your, your wife was watching. She was something. like streaming Netflix in the background yeah. or something. Nothing. Well, makes you wonder if that my was kids probably. always running nine instances of yeah. Minecraft at the same okay. time. Okay, so. so I wonder <laughs> can we can we try a controlled setting where we just tell everyone, hey, don't touch this for the next twenty minutes while we yeah. play these two stages. Yeah, look, yeah. in 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 our office, we certainly get some Wi-Fi interference, right? A ton. As yeah. well, I did um I did play download play at home and got some lag as well. Interesting. Where I only have I have a I have. Two networks, like an 802.11 and that one. That GM guap. No, no, it's <laughs> it, you, you gotta two you, different service three, providers with three kids. You know, you gotta have multiple networks. You downloaded an update to your car. That means it can drive you home. <laughs> Not quite on the freeway. We'll see Soon. if that works. We'll see. All right, the, there's Fancy a firmware guap. update. Okay, really? Um, yeah. He did. All it's, right, so let's move forward then. That's awesome. Um, we'll see. I, I don't think it's going to work quite as well as people say it. He'll know what's going to happen. I'm scared. Wow. I would be scared too. I right, roll so, the dice. Um, no. Life is short. But you don't have to be scared to go alone in Zelda Triforce Heroes. Uh, so we played some single <laughs> player. Let's talk a little bit about that. <laughs> no, it's, it's that? actually, it was kind of, it was like a relaxing cruise compared to playing with you guys. So it's very <laughs> different than multiplayer. Um, not just depending on who you play with, but in that it turns into a series of puzzles where you have to bring these two other characters with you because they are dolls they are doppelgangers the doppels they call them they have no will of their own so the idea is we've seen this puzzle in zelda before where you have a macguffin or a thing you have to carry to the end of a dungeon i've liked those puzzles in the past because they introduce a different line of thinking because you're constantly in the mindset of how do i use this item to get this here but then get me here mm -hmm. and figure it out when, however the whole game yeah. seems to be based on that and so far it's holding up there's some moments where there's a lot of dexterity and then there's somewhere it's very much carry these two like luggage yeah yeah uh so wind waker specifically had two temples just like that right mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. was with the what's her name that bird girl <laughs> Mm -hmm. You guys uh, know what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, the duck bill. Yeah, the duck bill. Yeah. Uh, and the other one was with that kind of statue guy thing. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very terrible at describing those characters, and that's one of my favorite games of all time. Whatever. Sound off in the comments below. But so I'm sort of used to that, right? And I think um, it was a uh, Phantom Hourglass, I guess, where you had to... Spirit Tracks had, Spirit Tracks had it too. Character. Um, so I think like we're but, kind of used to it. This was a little different in that these characters, when you're not using them, are completely dead. They are. It's just a, a tree stump, basically. Yeah, that and just they sits can't there. take damage they don't unless follow. they, they fall can't take into damage. a pit or yeah. they fall into like lava. Yeah, uh, they'll go. But if they get hit by fire, if they get hit by an enemy, um, they get pushed by boulders, but they don't get crushed by boulders. Yeah. So your your life is basically jumping from link to link. And if you're playing as the green one and the red and the blue ones off to the side, and you're not controlling them, they're basically just statues that just stand there. They mm -hmm. don't do anything. They don't respond to you or anything that you have to click on them to, you know, enable them and they start running towards you again. But I felt like 
when it was working, it was really fun and I really got it. When it wasn't, it was kind of a drag and it felt a lot like micromanaging. It, it, it sort of felt like when you go grocery shopping yeah. and you've got a bunch of yeah. bags of groceries yeah. and you have to get them in the car to your house, but uh, someone needs to open the door and then to get back and you're by yourself and you can't like, it's I, like leaving one behind to pick one up, that's to a pick good, another that's one a up. Way to put it. And, and Wind Waker was medley, right? Medley in my car where like, yes. you looked it up. Just that, yeah, I just looked it up. Thank I you. I remembered. Uh, but me- medley followed you around. There was there was a lot of frustration too with losing those characters yeah. in the dungeon, right? Because of the follow mechanics, you could also get in trouble where they could get hurt or fall into mm-hmm. a hole, and like that doesn't happen in this game, which is was which, which is nice. But it does. It would be nice if there was a very simple, hey, everybody, form on me and follow me kind of a, a function yeah. with, with the dolls, or at least well. have them all totem to you. Maybe not follow you. So yeah. where, you I, where I turn into a totem form. Where mm-hmm. I found it working pretty well was now the main concern with it is that if you want to get up. The simplest things in a Zelda game that used to be, you know, easy enough for you was like a set of stairs. You yeah. know, it was like, how do I get up this? So, well, I can hook shot up. I can uh, use you know, like the rocks feather and jump up or something like that. But in Triforce Heroes, a set of stairs when you're playing by yourself means that there is a, three characters on the bottom step, and one of them picks up two characters and throws mm-hmm. them to the second step. And then the other one turns around and picks up another character and throws them to the third step. So now you have three characters on three separate steps, and you're like. What do I do? Yeah. Like, how do I go back and get this guy down but on the you bottom? Don't, you don't get enjoyment out of trying to figure that out. No, I no, do. I, I yeah. totally do. But then there were there were moments That's where why like, I don't want the bind thing. I just wanted to say that. Like sure. when he said, like the option to bring everything to you, no, I think it would make it incredibly so, easy. No, in that game yeah. it wouldn't work. I totally yeah. agree with yeah. you. No, I mean follow like. Granted, the stages are nearby. The granted, not jump across chasms yeah, to get to you. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. just wanted to be clear. I'm sorry, Brian. You yeah. wanted to finish up. Um, it, it also uh, so where I found that it started to work really well was you get this one. There's a sort of water weapon that uh, water rod that the water rod that, that creates this tower that you can stand on that will let you bring you to even playing field to the set of stairs. So you take the green guy on the bottom step, water rod him to the second, mm-hmm. then take the blue guy on the second step, water rod him to the third, and so on. Oh. So all of a sudden you have everybody in the same page of this constant micromanagement of like picking up, throwing, picking up, throwing. Don't forget too, you, uh, you I find it interesting that you can yeah. totem with all of them and then the top guy will just cast the water rod. But my favorite, one of my favorite yeah. early puzzles, and we have a video of this on IGN, there's actually seven minutes of single player, and it is one where you have to take a link, make three water, use the water rod to build three pillars you can walk on and then quickly switch to the green guy, yeah. pick up a bomb, run across them oh, yeah. before they go away and then throw the bomb across they hit to a wall. blow something up. Yeah. To me, those are the best moments where there's a lot of dexterity and you have to, re- there's some skill it's involved though, in it. Yeah. It's not easy. There's one puzzle in the volcano layer I cannot figure out how to do. <clears throat> Excuse me, in single player, like it's really tough because there are three platforms with three switches you have to hit, but you can't stand on them because they're unstable platforms. And so if you leave a a figure there to then do your power, I don't think it could be done. Um, I'm trying to figure it out, but it, it. it's been a really good time. And actually, the one thing I will say about single player to me that stands out the most is that it reminds me a lot of Aonuma's first Super Nintendo directed game he made, uh, Marvelous, Another Treasure Island, which did not come out in the States, but it was sort of a, a Goonie style adventure with these three kids on this island, uh, you know, basically trying to foil and find a uh, certain treasure. They're pirates and weird things. But each character, when, when Triforce Heroes has an individual ability for each link in single player, it is just like in Marvelous when each character has one specific ability and you have to use them in tandem in ways to figure out how to solve certain puzzles. So I really like that and I like the fact that each character gets their own item usually. Sometimes. Sometimes sometimes all three people have bombs or there's two bombs and an arrow. Mm -hmm. What I don't like about single player, and we were talking about this before, Mm -hmm. um, is that the game centers so much around collecting materials to craft costumes that give you special Mm -hmm. attributes inside the levels. And when you play multiplayer, you're wearing the bomb suit, I'm wearing Kokiri suit, and you're wearing, you know, the a beautiful dress. A beautiful, gorgeous dress. Um, when you play single player, you pick one outfit for one of those links that sort of becomes your primary link. Yeah. Like it's always the green one. Yeah. So the green link is, is just like he's wearing Kokiri suit. The other two don't get outfits. And it seems like a miss. Like, it's an odd choice. It's weird, yeah. you know? It, like, it makes you wonder, did having three outfits empower you to the point where the dungeons were too easy, or do you earn that right later? Like, I don't know. 
It yeah. does feel I, like an interesting choice. I was surprised like because, because I, would, I would frequently pick up one of the dolls and go, oh, no, wait, Kokiri's suit guy has to be on top to get the triple mm -hmm. arrow, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Because um, when you have, I'm sorry, just to add to that, when you have three suits in multiplayer, it doesn't make it easy because you still need communication. Yeah. But when you're the guy directing the entire experience, you don't need the communication. So yeah. it does seem like an unfair That's advantage to, to, a, it, to a certain extent. But to the game's credit, I mean, it works. I, I watched um, the single-player gameplay before I played it, and I will I can definitely confirm it's more fun to play than it is to watch. Totally. Oh, okay. totally. It, it looks more tedious than it is. When you're actually thinking about the puzzle solutions, you're moving around, it is actually way, way more fun. And I also like the sound effects when you were playing as one of the dolls, the music. Uh, the, you get these subtle kind of music changes. Oh, yeah. So if, you're the, if you're the bottom, uh, so each layer of the totem has a different song, believe it or not. And you may not mm -hmm. notice unless you become that, that person on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. So the bottom layer hears a certain melody. The center layer hears this very faint, almost, um, there's a vocal layer yeah. that no one else hears. But if you then control the topmost person, you hear all three. Oh, wow. Another uh, very fun clever musical little. That's really smart. Is, I did not know is that. in download play. In download play, if the other two players are listening to 8-bit covers, an 8-bit cover of the song you're hearing fully orchestrated or semi-orchestrated. Oh, wow. But it all syncs up. It all yeah. syncs up When you play it together. Yeah. Um, so there, there are little nods and touches. and. You know, again, we're, we were trying to stay spoiler free, and I think we have, but even uh, Madame Couture's dress shop has some interesting touches. Like, there's a mirror that you could just walk up to and be like, hmm, check me out. Like, mm -hmm. I'm this girl, I, I look kind of weird in this thing. Because so, mu so much of the game is based around collecting these costumes. Like, that's really the yeah. hook. You so, know? Yeah. not having the, the additional costumes in single player is an, is an interesting choice, but it still works really yeah. well. And it evokes Marvelous in a way that I didn't expect, honestly. Like, I did so not expect to see that game live on in a Zelda game. And meanwhile, this is the game that, I'm sorry, just to finish this up, is responsible for Aonuma's career. That yeah. game no, put really him cool. on Miyamoto's radar to come on the Zelda team. Um, it, I actually thought, you know, when I first saw this game, I was worried that it wasn't going to be as fun as um, as Four Swords. Me in, too. In single player. I actually think this one is better in single player than Four Swords. It is much better. Far, yeah, it is World's far. Better. It, the puzzle design is much smarter. It mm -hmm. really relies on this kind of clever carrying and throwing mechanic stuff. I actually think it's more fun in, in multiplayer than Four Swords. Like, I think that, that verticality of, of totem stacking is just way more interesting. It adds to way more chaos. Picking up characters and throwing them is not something um, you really had. Also, Four Swords was way more competitive. I don't know if you, people it really was, remember yeah, that. Yeah. But there was a lot of individual scoring going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. A lot um, of Triforce shards. Now, the main hook, yeah, right? That was always like... Overkill just, of, yeah. Yep. Yeah, just it killing people of that. Uh, so the main hook of these of these of these temples or dungeons or areas, these thirty two environments, is uh, I don't think a lot of people are really realizing that they sort of center around a few puzzles that the first time you play them are very tricky, and the second time it's sort of second nature. But by the third time, uh, you totally have them down. And I think if people are like, why would you play that level three times? Well, because the crux of this is really about this loot grind. It's mm -hmm. it's a, about getting gear, and at the end of every <clears throat> stage. There are three treasure chests, and you get to pick from one, and the other two guys get to pick from two, or if you're playing by yourself, all three characters become one character, and you go, well, good luck here. And Jose, you had a very tough time with this. So uh, I'm glad you brought this up, because yeah, so in multiplayer, when you, so first of all, in absolute, I agree with you, this is very much Monster Hunter meets Zelda, or yeah. even Destiny meets Zelda to an extent, not, be, not being a first person shooter or anything, but definitely that it is a game driven by the thing, the promise of what you can get. The and, drops, or even yeah. like a Warcraft raid or something like yeah, that, right? Yeah, like you, you get materials, you take them to Madame Couture, you get fun outfits that at the end of the day will make your next trek through the world more fun or more yep. interesting, and so I think that's a really smart uh, use of it. We also haven't played competitive just put that out but the, oh, yeah. getting back to the point yeah I had a ton of anxiety with the treasure chest because so in multiplayer it wouldn't bother me if the three of us ran up to chess and we each got something and let's say you got the rare material which last night you did it twice yeah and I we deserved got it because I got the wind bag twice yeah there you go uh, <laughs> oh, whereas maybe. we got we got, got um, we got the regular material but I needed the regular material like I was right. trying to get the ice climbers uh, yeah. excuse me not the ice climbers the uh, cozy parka made it looks like an ice climbers coat in single player when I get to that point of the game, I get a ton of anxiety because now I get to choose one of the three chests. And I it must be the luckiest man in Hyrule because every time I get the rare material, but I didn't want it. So why, at one why point, is this I decision so, so hard for you? Desperate. I walked up to our facilities man, Pablo, and I said, Pablo, pick a number between one and three. I need your help. And he's like, well, what's going on, chief? I was like, I keep getting the wrong thing. And he just looked at me like, okay. 
go with number one. And I picked it, and it was common. I was like, thank you. We should, the we, should we should specify that Pablo is a character at IGN and not a character in Triforce Heroes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because Pablo, the facilities man that helps you pick a treasure chest, sounds like a Zelda character. It does. It does. But he came to write it. I think, I think it's so funny. Like Mario. The real guy looks like Mario. Oh, yeah. He dressed I, up I, I think it's Halloween. so funny that you that you have anxiety with this. Because for me, it's sort of I just like. I want my outfits. I, I know. <laughs> but so that's the thing. So you beat you beat a stage. You get the, the one of three chance. Uh, maybe you get what you want. Maybe you don't. And then you try it again because every one of these stages has a rare sort of item in it. Well, so. and then you can manipulate the drops by doing the challenges because yeah. th basically by adding uh, the modifiers, I'm going to let you talk here, no. sorry. Um, you can manipulate and say, okay, this item is going to show up double if I go through this route, so let me do that instead. Now, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. You do right. have influence over some of the drops, mm -hmm. right? Like the the selection of drops depending on the challenge and then there's a guy in the middle of the town uh, a merchant who sells you items as well mm -hmm. and so I saw a lot of the common items are there you know there's purpose to collecting the the rupees and then buying some and his of inventory stuff. changes but you have to switch off the game if yeah. you just have it in sleep mode and open up uh, his inventory will not change because time doesn't really pass in this game like the town is just always at one time of day. Well, but there is a there's a daily um, treasure treasure challenge Which also, as well. Also, I think right? you need so. to reset the game though, because I had it open for the longest time, and he was like, "Nope, got to come back tomorrow." And I'm like, "When's tomorrow?" I mm, I think it's that after was midnight. yesterday. After midnight. It was after midnight. Well, I, so I did I did one I one at ten o'clock last night, and another another one at eight o'clock this morning, and I they were you got it was yeah. totally separate treasure. Yeah, I think it uses the clock for sure for yeah. for replenishing that one. Well, as you've heard, there's a lot to love about Zelda Triforce Heroes. Yep. I mean, it's a, it's a fun, fun game. Like, if you're on the fence, check out the coverage yeah. we have on IGN. We're going to have some Let's Plays coming up. Um, any final thoughts before Be we take a break? I mean, to me, the big question is, will it run smoothly? Will there be enough people to play with? Because this game, you know, it... it I can imagine that it's very frustrating if you want to play and you're waiting in the lobby for other players to team up with, yeah. right? So we haven't seen that yet. So it depends on how well this game sells, too, yeah, right? Yeah. How many people are playing and how for and how long check, they like, play. Community sites like Reddit or maybe like IGN, people will probably be sharing oh, uh, yeah, friend yeah. codes and things. So make sure you find some people to play with. Yeah, and then are, are 32 levels enough, right? Will it run? Yeah. Will yeah. it run smoothly? Will you have enough to do? Yep. 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 Any any final thoughts from you? Uh, so <clears throat> I'm 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 really enjoying single player a lot more than I thought I would be. Uh, I did rage quit a level this morning, and um, it's about a third of the way into the game, and I'm hoping that that doesn't become indicative of where the rest of it goes because I feel like there's a it's there's a lot of levels later on that'll probably be a lot easier in multiplayer than single player. Um, so I'm just hoping there's a good balance there between everything. That and I'm a little apprehensive about uh, some of the stuff is kind of not paywalled, but hidden behind uh, local multiplayer unlocks. So you're talking about friend tokens. Yes. Yeah, um, go ahead. Explain that for folks. So friend tokens are this, it's a system that basically I played online with you guys and I didn't get anything for it. You know, besides the good time of watching, you know, my boss hates yeah. my coworker. Yeah. But uh, he when hates I, you too. He hates me too. But <laughs> I when hates I, everybody. That's true. You guys windbagged me. Uh, <laughs> but having <laughs> having played local with you guys today, I got a friend token from Pear and I yep. got a friend token from Jose. So I took these two friend tokens and I brought them back to the shop. And with that, with three of them, I can buy one suit. With five of them, I can get another friend suit. Token friend, <laughs> friend token exclusive. Friend token exclusive is what they say. Uh, and so, in, in case you you've been collecting amiibos and you haven't heard the word, you know, retail friends. exclusive enough oh, time. Sorry. We haven't heard okay. friends, that's for sure. <laughs> I know I haven't. Um, so I'm a little worried about that because, I mean, it's it's sort of uh, assuming a lot that the average person will be able to play multiplayer with at least eight, you know, eight different people or whatever, eight different tokens worth of people. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to get a different token the next time I play with you guys. Hopefully, No, right? I, think, I think you no, need to find another person. person. And it's download yeah. play or local play. They don't, uh, they they don't, don't give have you a to token for online play. Which is kind of a bummer because I mean, was the worry that they weren't really your friends? Like, I don't understand. They call them no. friendship tokens, so I guess that was the hook. Okay. But because download play is basically your way to upsell the game. Dude, so I need so exactly. Yeah. It is. It is a selling strategy, right? Like you are saying, "Hey, you don't have this game, but let's play it." You can so download what, what it. What you guys and, are saying is you're saving. You're the marketing so you the game. So better. what you're saying is, I have to play this game locally with eight different yeah. actual human beings if, on planet Earth. If you want you have that thing, eight friends. I've seen no, it. I do. I'm lucky. I work in. The, I work in the video game industry. I work in a place where. People bring 3DSs every single day. I'm okay. talking about average person who lives in a small town that doesn't yeah, really have a lot of. But you know. if you're that committed that you want those two, you know, friend outfits, outfits 
I'm sure you can find like a street pass event or you yeah. know, something. There are yeah. local communities yeah. for that stuff. I know sure. we have some good friends in uh, San Diego who put together street pass events, and they are they will be responsible for bringing people together to get local and download play on. Maybe we'll have yeah. to throw one again. I think we do, yeah. uh, and I think folks would love it if we did. But yeah. don't get your hopes up yet because we got nothing to say right now. Yeah. Uh, but we do need to take a break, so let's do that. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Twilight Princess HD, and do we really want it right now? Stay with us. Here we go. Welcome back. Jose Otero here with Parrish Schneider and hey, Brian Altano. And it's a good long break is, you gave us. Yeah. It's such a short, short break. <laughs> uh, we're 40 minutes in. Uh, but I do want to talk about uh, Twilight Princess HD is all over the blogs, message board. Yep, Everyone's yep, talking yep. about it. So the fun, the fun tale starts with all fun tales, the way all fun tales start, with some data mining uh, that revealed a photo of uh, Twilight Princess, uh, you know, I guess embedded somewhere on your Wii mm -hmm. U or on your eShop, <laughs> then a listing as well. Mm -hmm. and this has led to a ton of speculation but as to... Specifically Twilight Princess HD the was title. the listing. Yeah, was listed. the title was, no was listed. Info or pictures or anything. So we've seen... We've well, there, seen was a, there was art apparently yeah. found too. They also had a listing for Super Mario Galaxy and I believe a couple other Wii Which games. Which are Wii games that yeah. they sell on Virtual Console. Yeah. Thank you for that. So we've had uh, maybe, what, five Wii games on Wii U officially so far. Mario Galaxy, Galaxy 2. Galaxy 2 and, and a few others. A few yeah. others. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. blanking right now. That's okay. Donkey the, Kong Country Returns. Right. Yeah, uh, Punch Out, Wii, Metroid Prime, Metroid Trilogy. Prime Trilogy. I think that might be yeah. all of them. Actually, I know in Japan there's more. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Continue. So I think we thought initially that it's gonna it would be a straight port, um, but the HD thing tipped us off, and I think uh, it makes it both makes perfect sense and it, and it's also probably not the right time for this. So like I think if when we look at Wind Waker HD, that kind of came at a time where there wasn't really a ton of stuff going on on Wii U. They needed a Zelda. They needed a Zelda. Quickly. A hundred percent, and that's such a really that's such a fantastic game to go back to. Um, and I feel like the difference was that Wind Waker. It, Wind Waker is one of those games that you remember looking gorgeous forever, because <laughs> um, it really, it really is. Yeah. It's just, it's all about the art direction. Twilight Princess, on the other hand, was never really, truly a beautiful game, but a like, good one. It's, it's a great game, and there's a gorgeous game in there. It right? had scope and it had moments and great atmosphere, but it was technically, you know, as a, as a, you know. Early Wii game, it was more like a late GameCube. Yeah, game, like, right? the, like it was the, it, it was a late GameCube yeah. game. It was <laughs> a late GameCube game. It didn't look fantastic on GameCube. Um, I remember buying it on Wii on day one, yeah. playing it for five or six days, being kind of really upset at how sort of blurry it was. Yeah, yeah. And then ordering component cables and hooking those up because that those were supposed to be the the saving grace. Yeah. Okay. And then realizing that they didn't make a major difference either. No. It was just you know by then a lot of people were already playing you know. Actual HD consoles. So, Brian, Pear, I want you guys to answer the question, though. Do we really <clears throat> want a Zelda Twilight Princess HD, whatever you want to call I, it, right now? Well, is I don't know what right it is. Time? Right. Le look, Wind Waker took Nintendo a long time to get this HD port out, and yeah. it was absolutely worth it. And, you know, Wind Waker is... It, I'd say it is a more balanced quest and a more interesting quest than Twilight Princess, even though it had a huge issue with uh, the, the Triforce quest being a pain in the butt and the travel. Which Twilight they Princess, Twilight yeah. Princess was a huge game. They tried to do everything we ever we ever asked for, right? More dungeons, more environments, a more some more mature kind of themes in that game. Yep. I I actually like that game. I hear people, oh, I love that. Game. I, I hear people game talk too. crap about it all the time, but it had some some really touching moments. The whole Twilight Princess kind. Yeah. Of the conclusion, there was, there how it was worked. Some, the the was intro cool. was a little boring. I'll, there was a couple of places the, where they could use some nipping and I will, I will straight absolutely. up go on record and say that Twilight Princess has the best dungeons of any 3D Zelda. Of I don't any know of if them. I'd join you on that, but that's a bold statement. I, yeah. will, I will absolutely it, respect that. The dual the, hookshot Sky Temple uh, is one of the cool. coolest things Nintendo's yeah. ever done. That was cool, and like also in the desert, you know, you get some cool stuff like figuring out the cannon and the lake and all that. Or even There's the magnetic so boots much. that would yeah. push you upside down, and you'd like be walking, stomping across the yep. ceiling yep. trying yep. to get to certain it, places. It Things just, like that were very cool. It had cool. a lot of stuff. It's just the, the overworld was a bit empty. There there was stuff to do, but it was very formulaic. Right? Hyrule Field specifically. Move this statue. Okay, but you still haven't answered my question. Okay. Okay, so is it the right time? What else are you going to play right now? On on like if you're a Wii U owner, if what you're else a Wii are you going to play? If you're well, a Wii U owner, uh, you go ahead. No, I was going to say like it's it's 
if you're a Wii U owner, probably not a ton. I mean, right? Yoshi's coming out. That's been fun. Yeah. Uh, like I was, I was. I'm, you're probably still playing Mario Maker if but you're like me. I don't think me. it's a question of what else are you going to play right now. I mean, this year is yeah, pretty much in the. No, it's not. It's this year is pretty much in the books. If you are planning to revisit Twilight Princess. In my opinion, it makes sense to save that card for the next thing. By the way, you have a Zelda game you're working on that you're trying to get out the door that you're saying, and you told us City 3 is going to be on that platform. Yeah. I'm not saying one existing means the other one doesn't, but what I am saying is I'd rather have that new Zelda game than play one that I could that I can still play right now. And I also, part of me thinks, sorry, I just want to finish yeah. this off, that this is just a listing for Twilight Princess to be sold on the Wii eShop. That's it. Yeah, but that's Wii a, that's an so that's the that's what I was saying. It depends yeah. on what it is. It depends Wind on what Waker it is. took a long time and it turned out gorgeous and I love that it was back and it was so good to get that game. It is still one of the best games on yeah. Wii U. Just yeah. the amount of if work they, to get Twilight Princess that's, HD to be done. So that's that's it. not the amount of work that Wind Waker needed. Wind Waker was a lower effort you, because a lot of those a lot of the textures just and, needed some updating so, and it was cell shaded. Yeah, and yeah. that's why I'm worried that Twilight Princess HD is literally the same game with the same textures in HD, just running at a higher resolution and maybe a little smoother, but those but textures not, are going to show their age and that is not going to, to be a successful. But Nintendo's not known for that product. They're not going to, it's either it's a it's the Wii okay. version on eShop or it's a full remake. And by the way, like, if this is a full remake, why is Aonuma trapped to remake every game he has worked on? But maybe it, Mario games don't even but, get that kind of attention. But my, my point there would be, it's True. not an either or. Sure. You can take Twilight Princess, which is a great game and is complete, give it to a team like Grezzo or whatever and say mm -hmm. redo the art and your Core Zelda team still works on Core Zelda. But I don't think uh, I don't think overloading uh, Wii U on Zelda is going to change the fact that NX is a thing that you are going to be talking about in 2016. I don't, why overloading? I mean we've had one remake need, on the platform. I don't think it needs more. I think this boat needs, in my opinion, this boat needs to sail. I'd rather get my Zelda Wii U when it's ready and Wind Waker was the one about sailing boats. Twilight yeah. Princess is about a wolf. <laughs> I'd rather <laughs> have. I'm not saying this out of anger. I'm saying this more out of. I just sure. feel like this is much ado about possibly nothing. I don't know. More more games for the Wii U is a good thing, and that is a great. More game. games you played already is good is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the other thing that kind of burns yeah. me too is everyone wants HD remakes until they get HD remakes and they go, <gasps> I played this or I'm buying this again or blah blah blah. But yeah. it depends on how much time has passed. To be fair. Yeah. I mean, so they like Naughty Dog just put out the Uncharted collection on on PS4. Eighty percent mm -hmm. of of PS4 owners had never played any Uncharted games before that. Like, I think we're grossly overstating how many people have experienced this game already, and the fact that like to experience Wait a it. Minute. What? Oh no! Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say to experience finish. this game now, um, you like you have you have to go buy the Wii version. I think it's like still pretty expensive. Yeah, it's not like on a greatest hits disc or anything like that. No, or, but uh, it's probably out of print. But Twilight Princess was on probably <clears throat> their most successful pla one of their most successful home consoles ever, and yeah. it sold really well. Like there were plenty of people who have played yeah. that game. I don't think I, it's the same situation. I hear what you're saying. It is it is a different situation. Out of all the projects to work <clears throat> on, it it. Doesn't feel like the right one. Sure. At the same time, there's just not enough games, yeah, and so no, yeah. you know, remaking cool. a game that is great, like Super Mario 64, or Galaxy, or you know, or this one, I think is a good move. Yeah, and so, I'll definitely eat crow if this ends up being oh, it's it's happening, but so, part of me just doesn't want it. To so. answer to answer your question, do I want this right now? No, my dance card is full for 2015. I have so much, including I'm playing a Zelda that they just that, that we just got. You know yeah. uh, that that our audience will start playing very soon. Yeah. Uh, like the fact that I went from not really playing any 3DS for like six months to going from Animal Crossing to Chibi Robo to Zelda within. Which we haven't talked about Chibi Robo. Yeah. We got to get you to do that at some point. Yeah. At some point. I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't want that. to derail you, but I yeah, just sure, wanted sure. to bring that up. So, uh, and then, you know, there's the, I, I'm still playing some Metal Gear. Uh, I just started the Uncharted Collection. Uh, I, I, Star Wars Battlefront's going to take a lot of my time. Fallout's coming. I don't believe Star Wars Battlefront's going to take a lot of your time. I you really, don't play multiplayer. I'm playing that one. What? I played what? the hell out of that beta. What? I love it. Oh, he doesn't play multiplayer with, with us. Yeah, you guys, oh, yeah, because you're awful man. people. You, you, That's you're the you're thing. falling in a hole tonight, man. All right. Well, <laughs> I appreciate you both weighing in on this. I feel Wait, like... I was just going to add... Go ahead. You can add... February. You want to drop that game in February? I'm all ears. Well, maybe that will happen. Twilight right? Princess think, HD, give it to me February, March, or something like that. When the dust clears on this year, and then Christmas 2, yeah. which happens every year And now. we're glossing over some of the facts. I think there's even some hint that this just seems to be a Japan-only thing in terms of listing. Like, we didn't really go into super, super depth on this. Because I think the bigger question is, is this a good thing right now? And I don't think it is. I yeah. think there are bigger 
concerns. There's other IP you could be sharing the remake love too. I don't need another Zelda right now. Like I really don't. Really I, th- don't. I think you're totally right in that it's a lot of like, hey, look at this hand, while the other hand keeps pushing the new Zelda behind. Um, and we still if don't know it's what's, official. if it's Sorry. official. Mm-hmm. And we still don't know what's going on with N- NX. So there's a lot of questions in the air. And don't forget, uh, we are slowly <laughs> approaching. The mobile game is coming, and I am like on watch. I just want to know something. I want to know anything I can about this thing. To the point that it is disturbing how much I'm spending time. And maybe I'm <laughs> overthinking it. I, I feel like I am, but Nintendo. Nintendo is making a mobile game in 2015. That, it's this year. It is this year, yeah. and it's October, and so far, silence. All signs point to this thing is just going to show up one day on the App yep. Store in Japan, and we're just going to be like, what, what, what? I yeah, I mean, know. well, that's that's, what that's actually what's kind of awesome about the App Store. Uh, yeah. it, it actually has a, that leniency and frequency of sort of just being like, here you go. Uh, and there's very little surprise to it, and because um, the way all of that stuff gets delivered, it's it's like it's, it'll be like what a couple dollars, and it'll be like it's in your pocket right now. You already have everything you need to buy it. The, your credit card's linked. You don't have to go home and and hook up your console or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I think dropping games uh, as a surprise on the App Store is one of the smartest things they can do. Well, and that's usually what plays into marketing, right? I mean, you've done research on this. Usually, when people hear about it, it's best that it's there. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you can get that quick purchase if they're it, that interested. It doesn't work very often with mobile games to pre-announce them and not have them available for download. I mean, it works for any game like, you know, your your whatever, like an, a demo of the Unreal Engine where, you know, Tim Cook demos it on stage at an Apple event and then it comes a week later. That totally works. But, you know, as Fallout Shelter has shown, if you release the game during the announcement, <clears throat> you are going to see big, big download numbers, even on something that wasn't a traditional yep. traditional mobile and game. And this will be a free-to-play. Like yeah. a, all bets the, are on free-to-play, in, that, in, in, in-app purchases. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and that's why I think their inaugural title will be casual, will be Super Japan-focused. We're not going to see, like, you know, your a, a spin off on Mario Kart or something. I mm-hmm. think it will be a very Japanese centric game. I agree um, with you. A proven license over there, and then something similar to House Arrest, where it's a more limited approach, right? What could it be, though? Yeah. Oh, I just it's not going to be Animal I Crossing. Have one good because hand to slam. We, we are too close to an Animal Crossing release for it to be Animal Crossing, so it's got to be one of their other Japan friendly franchises. It won't be Pokemon because we have the separate project. No, Pokemon. See, I don't. Oh, I, 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 I wouldn't even look at their release list this year and be like, it's too close. It's too similar. Like this is this is a yeah. completely different market. Left field. This is a completely yeah, different market. But they don't. But they don't. Remember, they're so scared that somebody will say, "I don't need to buy a 3DS. I can play these games on mobile." And it will take them a while to teach the users, "Hey, there is a different game on these platforms." Yeah. They will use these mobile games to market their console and handheld. And games. don't forget the Nintendo mm-hmm. app or whatever is going to replace yeah. the loyalty service. The thing that DNA is currently or, or presumably crunching on. I mean. There's a bunch of uh, Wii U maintenance, I think I saw the other day, scheduled uh, 3DS maintenance. All the networks are getting maintenance. That must mean one thing. We're close. We are super close. It feels like (laughs) it is is not months. It is is weeks or days uh, until that game gets revealed. It would have been awesome if if it was announced with the return of the Nintendo Direct and if Mm -hmm. it was like, and you can download it right now, that kind of moment replicating that from, you know, the, the Bethesda press conference. But... I don't think Nintendo is ready yet. You know, obviously there's history history with the directs, and they don't have a ton of other stuff to no. announce right now. Well, yeah, and, and directs are not just announcement, but f- you know, showing off features, showing up yeah. off game footage, which you know they kind of quietly bowed out of showing certain features for games that are coming up. I mean, Mario Tennis is coming out. You know, in November, and we still don't know a lot about that game. So, mm-hmm. and that's coming up really soon. I mean, which I, makes you wonder: I, is there a direct coming really soon? I would expect a stuff. direct to come this year. Still, I, yeah. like, I feel November. like they need to reboot. Yeah, they need it. one yeah. in November. I think um, November is the time. But I, I wish it had happened, or I wish it will happen with the mobile game, just to give it a little bit more push, push, and and Oof. and hear in Nintendo's own words why they're doing this again, rather than reading it in some poorly translated interview in Nikkei or. Something mm, like that. That's right. Yeah. Am I am I the only person like thinking about this? Or you guys? Am no, I obsessed? I'm no. Really I mean, so I, I like I have a very Curious. sort of cyclical uh, obsession with being an iPhone gamer. It happens for 
short bursts where I'll get into like seven or eight games at the same time and then I won't touch it for a few months. But I'm the same way with my 3DS, right? Where I get really yeah. into it for a little while and I put it away. Like I started playing Pac-Man 256. <laughs> yeah, did you uh, did you get the new Pac-Man too? There's there's another Pac-Man. Which now, one's that? Again. The uh, the Pac-Man where you draw the direction. It's very similar to, well, not very similar, but uh, it's oh, called Pac- Pac-Man yeah, Bounce. I did, yeah. You yeah. Get that too. That is yeah. a mobile-ass mobile game, by the way. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, but I got into that and I started playing a couple other games at the same time and I'm like oh man I really like I was also traveling a, a lot at the same time and I'm like I really like playing games on my phone again I have a big iPhone 6 plus it's a great time but then two or three months ago by where I don't even think of it as a gaming system and I just use it to check email text and, and web browse uh, but Nintendo's the kind of company that can kind of be like here's this thing and then I'm back in there and all yeah. of a sudden I'm, I'm playing mobile games again so it's smart it's yeah. very smart and we still got good games coming they're still uh, on at least on their other platforms you've got Xenoblade still coming out yep you have uh, this Animal Crossing game is still coming out. You have some software in the pipe. Zelda is coming up. But, yeah, I'm curious for the mobile game. And Nintendo, if you're listening, start talking. Let's hear it. Kimishima is only a week and a half or two weeks away from addressing investors. Do they yep. save it for then? Who knows? But they the will time has come. For then. Let's talk. You think for you don't sure. have to oh, right yeah, then? Yeah, 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 and yeah. it's available right now. Oh, man. And they all reach in their pockets and they all download the investors it. investors run out of the room. Mm-hmm. All right. Great so, time. <laughs> no it's questions about tester. T-shirts or anything <laughs> like that? Yeah. All right. So let's go into some quick news, and then we have some question block. And I, I really got to let you guys go because we're running over. All right. Uh, quickly, the news. Toys R Us exclusive Amiibo figures announced. So we have starting November 8th, Villager is in restock at Toys R Us only. And An exclusive restock. <laughs> It's pretty. Just hear that out. That's a real thing. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, On the note of exclusives, (laughs) have you noticed how much easier it is to get the last few exclusives? The retro three pack. Yeah, you just go. You go on eBay or you go on Amazon and you go in store. In store. No, so I've actually. uh, I will. I will 100% say uh, this is the one wave I sort of regret importing because you spend a little more money and you get the peace of mind out in reverse. But I, 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 like, I'll I'll casually walk through the amiibo section of stores, even though I'm all caught up. I have everything I need. You do it because it's like a heroin addiction. Well, I just want a serial killer (laughs) thing, man. He's stalking. Yeah. I come back to the scene of the crime. There are uh, limited hey, edition. That, that, Dr. Mario in there? That unshaven guy is there again. He's in the, he's in the toy store. Oh, him again? again. The unshaven the guy. Go get the broom. Hey, if anything, they did a crime to me. They murdered my wallet. All right. Uh, so, no, but I'll walk, by, I'll, I'll walk by. I remember a few months ago I went by, and it was just like, it was so sad. It was like two Zeldas, one Yoshi, and 50 Dr. That's Marios. Just a joke. <laughs> and I'm like, this is just like the weirdest. Because like no kid is like, yeah, I really want a physician action figure. It you just know? feels like the balance was never there. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. either like, no, and now it's all lopsided. For weeks. Everything you it's, can It's find. so weird, too, because yeah. when, when that was happening for a while, you were felt bad for characters like there was a minute where it was just it was just diddy kong oh poor oh. diddy kong and you're just like, with his going? lopsided eyes yeah you get yeah. diddy kong and, and then it was like it was like diddy kong and then uh peach, peach peach from the mario party line you're like what's oh, happening man. here no kidnappings uh Nobody. so no yeah nothing like that you've got them all though right i've Post got them all i will say gotcha. i will say the the moment and i don't these aren't out yet right the me fighters no, yeah. so that's a Toys R Us did you, exclusive. Did you order those? Mega. I got the Japanese pack. Me too. Mega the Yarn Yoshi. Yeah. Also, Mega Yarn Yoshi also I'm not exclusive. getting that. Me neither. Lies. That's not an amiibo. It's a stuffed you, animal. Daughter yeah. number one is going to ask for it. You're going to be like, sure. We have the regular amiibo. She so? can like hold them closer to her eyes. So <laughs> I got the I got the, a I, bigger one. I got the retro P- three pack of Rob, um, so Game and Watch, and uh, Duck Hunt, and they're by far three of my favorite they're great yeah. the figures that they've ever yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. On the flip side, I got the Me Fighter trio, and it made me question why I'm doing any of this. Yeah, because mm. I really, really dislike. I thought they're very, they're very terrible builds. They're like lifeless characters. I have no connection to them whatsoever. You know, I don't even know who those people are. They're not even based on you know anything. What? One of them looks like the uh, the me that my son made of himself. So okay. it is it feels like he got his own So that's uh, good. Yeah, so that one that's worked. Good. But yeah, yeah, like I, I still I still say and I don't know I don't have a solution for this, I'm just openly complaining, but I still feel like that was a huge missed opportunity to create some sort of like custom thing. Yeah, you yeah. know, but to they custom- don't have a loyalty program right now if that was the vehicle to do it. No, nah, you know? but you like you set up a website that, that lets people create their own. I think thing you still and, need that tied into it, yeah. in my opinion. I don't know. Loyalty programs are made just for things like this. Yeah. Exclu- yeah. exclusive exclusives. Like, yeah, I don't know. Just I, know I, I, I totally get, get it. At the toy store. They could give you one with a blank face and you have to apply stickers. Yeah, something like that. Buy stickers. Something like that. Uh, but do you have both colors? Where the new, the Japanese Rob just went um, on pre-order. For pre-order yeah. today. Did you get it? No. Yeah, I'm I didn't gonna either. wait till they're like the import stores here. Yeah. Carry them. Like I don't want to import. So I was, I was flying. Where was I going? I was going. Yeah, I was going to New York two weeks ago. 
uh, and um, the pre-orders went live on Play Asia, mm-hmm. and my plane was boarding, Aww. and I'm standing there with my wife, struggling on the airplane I Wi-Fi with my yeah with sure. my credit card in the other hand, and sure, she you was need like, to board. "They're like, sure. we need a board, we need a board," and I'm like, sure. "All right, all right," and I get on the plane and I refresh Put away it, your credit card. and they're all sold out, and I'm like. Oh man! Because uh, all I really want is that Japanese Rob. Like I re- have a really c- big connection to that. Do you character. have the two like, Japanese anniversary Mario? Do you have the yes. Japanese anniversary yes. Mario? See, I don't have that one yet. Oh, I just the, ordered uh, it. Jose gave me the uh, a US one. Classic. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, That you one is still Mario. that one. You can still not buy. But did you did you regularly. did you guys see? So the only way to get that in America was to buy the Wii bundle. The Wii U yeah, it was bundle hardware for it. exclusive. Yeah, and they're people, gonna release it later. Probably. This is so this is so cheap. People were buying it. And they were bringing it home, and they were switching it with the North America regular Mario or Dr. Mario and bringing wow. it back to the store. And they didn't notice? Yeah, and people were snapping pictures on Reddit of the uh, bundle that just came with Dr. Mario. So some kid's like, oh, it comes with a Mario toy. And the mom's like, oh, uh, great, the physician, my favorite. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's only until later where they're like, oh, man. So I yeah. imported it because I didn't want to deal with any of that wow. monkey okay, business. Okay. The right, diatrist so, uh, Mario. <laughs> let's move on so we could go quick. Uh, the the uh, Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses is back with an extended North America and European yep. tour. You can read on IGN the tour dates. Very, very cool stuff. If you need a peek of this show, uh, recently the Symphony of the Goddesses was on Colbert, uh, the late show with Stephen Colbert. You should totally watch it. It is. You will get goosebumps. This this is a concert worth your time. I have gone once. I love that concert. Did, loved it. Did you Absolutely notice uh, how Twilight Princess heavy that concert was? Whatever. It's it, the, the whole freaking. I. Ugh, you're mm-hmm. the third person who said this in my presence. That's called a like, pattern. <laughs> it's called a Zelda in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> it it does. It isn't tied to anything. Okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah. no, no, the Twilight I've Princess the music show. is. Definitely not tied to anything. No, yeah. definitely not. Especially no, not, not Twilight tied Princess. To pro- not tied HD to a product announcement. Available yet. in stores this fall. I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, if it is, it is. But I don't think so. I just think it's silly that everyone Kids makes the, the, the tiniest <laughs> connection. Like, for a second, they showed this thing of... of the, and I'm just like... Are you, Sure. All right. I think it Let's means Half-Life 3 I confirmed. think it means it's time mm-hmm. to move on. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jimmy Wilkinson sends us an email. This is the question block. Given the delay of Zelda Wii U and Star Fox, on the show you said Mario Tennis might fill the block as that game. What about the possibility of new DLC, DLC for the holiday season? Could a few Smash Brothers characters, a new Super Mario Maker skin slash item set, and a single player or a single player pack for Splatoon serving the same capacity? Love the show, loves the archives, loves the hosting, all that stuff. Thank you so much, Jimmy. What do you think? DLC this Christmas? Yes, no, maybe. For Splatoon? For he what? said Smash Brothers, Mario Maker, Splatoon. I think Mario Maker, please God. Uh, that would be Smash awesome. Brothers, absolutely. They're not done. Uh, I don't know about Splatoon. I saw a magazine scan this morning that showed uh, a Mario Maker DLC type thing. The stage for Smash Brothers. Yeah, you can get that. No, no, not that. They oh, you put, mean Mario Maker? Yeah, in Japan DLC? there was there was a like a new a new palette swap character thing, like a sprite based oh, on Oh, Famitsu got a character that's going to appear in there. Yeah, this is yeah. kind of like when uh I flipped out about the Mercedes Benz, but uh, it ended up leading to DLC. Yeah. It looks like it's a similar situation. Famitsu the Famitsu um mascot yeah, is yeah. going to be a character that's going to pop fox up in the game. Stupid fox-wolf thing. Stupid fox-wolf yeah. thing, but yeah. Um, DLC's coming. I think yeah. uh, the question for me, though, is is it this Christmas or not? Um, they've been really quiet. I think it would help. It would keep the conversation going for that game for sure. I think the yeah. conversation's going. Like, I think it's it's going really yeah, well. Good luck you you stopped talking to the people in the conversation because of Destiny. Because <laughs> some of the, well, because of Destiny and because I feel like uh, there I've came around to the discovery problem. I yeah. just Really? Yeah. The, it, every time well, I look at, the, at what's popular and I play and I go, why? And then I close it and leave. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It is still not a shoe in there, There's some cool there's levels one or two you can that I'm like, discover cow, by nice. looking at the top yeah. creators. But yeah, uh, some of the, the levels our fans have shared, I've seen, I've played some levels that were really pro. And I thank you for very, sending those, by the way. Very, very surprised at some of the stuff you guys um, have been building. Uh, you know, there, there are a bunch of levels that are, that are you, you, you can tell, People need to practice a little bit more creating um, creating stages without blind drops. And, you know, when well, I see a cliff, guys, I jump off. Well, and, yeah. and if I have to in a Mario game because you're expecting that to be there for a reason or there to be an indicator that there are spikes or something where you die. Well, let me know? be the one who come out and say it. If all you're focused on is 7% of the people who played my level, are can, like, no one can beat it. I'm just like, that's wrong. That's yeah. not the point. Yeah. If that's the point to you, stop it. Like, you are you are ruining something that is actually but, really good. Well, do you, you guys play 
place for both. You guys I think know, there's a yeah. place for both, but there's too yeah. many of one. You guys know <laughs> that's Lee, the problem. You guys know Lee Alexander. She wrote yeah. she wrote a whole feature about a sort of like helping people along with with Mario Maker levels and the, a good sort of like pointers and for basics. Uh, and she said something that's very important. I think a lot of people need mm. to understand, and that's when you play your level, you are amazing at it, and it's the hard it's the hard it's the hardest thing in the world is somebody else, but you know it front and back. So always make your level easier than you think your level should be. Yeah. Or at uh, least take the time, and we've said on the show, to think about what happens if someone doesn't do what I want them to do. Yeah. What am I? What, what is the, the consequence of that action? Is it yeah. death yeah. or is it something else? But to answer your question, I mean, data miners found some stuff in, in the on disk that the was same basically... The found the Zelda thing. Yeah, the, yeah, the sun with the sunglasses from Mario 3 and a couple yeah. other cool little things like that. Uh, personally, I'd rather they not trickle stuff like that out and then we do something next year that's more like here's uh, a Game Boy filter you know it can play the entire thing in black and white or Super Mario Land like a 2 graphics. Tile set for a the new Game Boy yeah. version yeah, that'd be yeah. Great. I'd rather wait for that than just like another line of items for 10 bucks or something like that or 5 bucks whatever yeah. they want to sell I know, for I think, I think both can have some utility I mean I think you can roll out a few items and see what the people do with it but also be working on something bigger like a bigger expansion but my, I guess my bigger point for wanting more is that I want I would love to see Mario Maker grow into a platform where a lot of things are possible right yeah. and right now there is a lot possible but we are going to reach a point where everything feels like it's been done yeah and i no, feel like one item can change check, that. yeah well checkpoints and keys right the key system could Thank be you. really cool yeah. there, there are a whole bunch of things that could make puzzle building so much more gratifying and, yep. and, and better but like i i love i talked about this before i love the limitations too because mm. people get so creative with limitations i played one of our listeners levels who created a there are four pipes each one leads to a different level and a different power up and you need to figure out what order to take them in in order to finish the level it's really right. clever you needed right. the fire flower to take down the little plants you needed the mm. uh, you know the propeller hat to fly up and get to yep. the next thing i people work with the limitations create clever stuff in two months or so, it'd be awesome if then we get the next level to, yeah. to let people well, and learn some new the, stuff. Some of sure. the best games I feel that we latched onto, and even the 8-bit era, were born of hard limitations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just finding developers being creative. So it's really refreshing to see that people are being put in the same position or able to do something so cool. All right, uh, moving on then. Uh, with the Nintendo with Nintendo using the open world environment uh, for n the next Zelda Wii U on an X or Wii U, whatever. Do you think that the traditional use of text-based speech will work, or will they finally have to give Link and the people of Hyrule actual voices? This question comes from Phil. The likes, you know, he wants something like on par with Witcher 3 or Metal Gear Solid 5. What say you? Are we ready for Link to have a voice, or is he a silent protagonist? Will everyone, or will he be a silent protagonist and everyone else will have a voice? Like, no offense, but both of those games were really bad examples of why games need defined voice acting. I agree. Like, uh, Metal Gear had maybe ridiculous dialogue. Just ridiculous dialogue. Yeah. But you had to listen to the radio transmissions, right? Like those you, were you, even worse but, in some cases. But you could you could listen into characters and find out where they are, which which was good, right? Like you no, needed yeah, the yeah, yeah no, but you I mean did, cool touch the, for puzzle solving. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Uh, Snake in Metal Gear Solid Five is mostly mostly says about as many words as Link does, right? Because he gets on the back of a horse and he goes yeah yeah whoa yeah, yeah, whoa yeah. yeah yeah. Well, if yeah. you listen to the briefing tapes, he actually says a lot yeah. more, but it's all. Uh, Konami and Koji Pro went for a more optional story route than yeah. the way they used to do it, which is where they force you through cutscenes. Um, I feel like both. I, I feel like the charm of Zelda to me is still reading text, and yeah. I feel like really? clever text still works for me. I'm old school though. Like I, you guys can disagree. I mean, no, you, I actually, you're I on the cutting edge. You, the, uh, you know, looking at your car and stuff. But more importantly, like you want <laughs> my car does not talk. You, you want, uh, you want full voice driven cutscenes. <laughs> I think the problem with cutscenes is that when the voice cast is wrong or when when something stands out that shouldn't it becomes a detractor whereas when the voice is in your head it's still satisfying you don't yeah, make that mistake yeah but nintendo has done clever voice acting where they have characters speak in foreign languages well, right like look at the pikmin games i never walk away from the pikmin games going like well i wish there was voice acting because the characters have personality but you're reading 90 percent of that game yeah but they're going hop -ba 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 -ba, right? like you're getting a sense that these are real characters with voices and you know you're in an environment where got everything it, makes it. a noise so you're saying the, if even if they spoke the, gibberish you'd be happy the, as long as it felt like satisfying yeah they i do feel speak like with, with zelda games zelda, uh, <gasps> but no but yes. that's the that's the extent of the range of acting. yeah but yeah. with Sorry. zelda games like the action sometimes and the the immersion grinds to a halt when like your character is running away and then zelda says stop link and everything freezes and it feels like it's like this 
you know, like you, you're just getting these subtitles. I feel like it does break a little bit. Mm. I don't think I'm totally fine with Link never saying a word. Yeah, you're completely right. Metal Gear works without that character speaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, much. I mean, yeah, yeah. Jack Bauer pops up once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, and he. I honestly think he didn't do as good as a job as no. He, I mean, he's a he's a millionaire. Hater, he's a millionaire actor. He filmed yeah. it in. Um, but I I do think like some of the modern games like Tomb Raider and Uncharted have done such a wonderful job bringing characters alive and not stopping the action with cutscenes. Right. Like Sully sits next to you in the in the car and he talks to you and you're going off a ramp and both characters go like holy crap right like they're reacting and it sometimes feels, I think, but so, it feels so alive. But I think there are limitations to it. I mean there are examples where yes it can work and there are examples where you're sitting in the car in GTA and this guy sitting next to you just will not shut up and you yeah. just want to get to the next point. Yeah. There's there's a give and take, but or I he's getting what, shot in the side of the head, and he's still explaining. He's like, "Yeah, I gotta go pick up my kids." And it's like, brr, brr. Yeah, but, 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 but don't use point. the worst of voice acting no, 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 as an no, example. No, 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 I agree. Have I don't. It. I don't want to. I don't want to go with that. But yeah. I do feel like the way they've handled it so far is adequate to me. But that's obviously just my opinion. You know, um, I don't. I don't need a full voice driven game to be more interested in that game. To me, the game is the game, and the adventure is the adventure. See, yeah, and I'm, I can I'm, read it, and I'm fine. But think about how I, cool and menacing Ganon could. Be He's if he had already. if he had a great voice and oh, you didn't oh, oh, and he wasn't oh. you know but but he wasn't there looping his animation just doing the like uh, no that's uh, a problem uh, uh, laugh. I agree with that that's it, a problem it takes you out of the illusion <laughs> He's fix, not scary yeah, fix that like I'm okay with that that's I great. don't think voice work like I think that's more an animation issue than it is yeah. a voice acting or a performance I, issue no. <laughs> I, guys, the the series is at a point where they they animate so well. Nintendo can create gorgeous animations. Look at Fire Emblem, and Fire Emblem is an example where the voices are actually really good. I mean, granted, it's a Japanese version, but like the voices of the characters when they do speak, the lip syncing, everything looks really good. They can do it. Let's not use games like Super Mario Sunshine where they phoned it in. It was terrible no, as no. example. To be fair, you I know? think Fire Emblem is a great example. I actually mm -hmm. really like that. If you can get to that kind of quality, fine. I just don't need Link to say a word. But I'm not going to lose. I guess what I'm the point I'm trying to make to our to Phil here is I'm not going to lose anything. I feel if I'm still reading it when Zelda Wii U comes out. And I know some people are staunch. You know, it's it, to me it's kind of like hanging on to the 1080p 60 frames debate of if it ain't 1080p or 60 frames I won't play. Well, because like, that's, 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 that's everybody's biggest argument, and people have been asking for this for so long. They're like, we need voice acting in Zelda, and I'm like, why? And they're like, cause it's insert name of year yeah they should have Ebo and I'm like well I don't think so like okay. I disagree like I think it's a style decision for them that like so Mario 64 had voice acting in the very beginning where it was like hi Mario it's I Peach I made you a cake <laughs> yeah come on inside Peach and then it's like bah, 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 bah. and then the rest of the game is just like wah, 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 wah. like this is like, okay like, but I mean I'm reading forward. the script I'm reading the script there as it's happening and it's telling me the story and I feel like Zelda has been always the same way they Problem solved around that. If like the next Zelda trailer, you see him drop the sh the the sword, and he's just like, "I'm Link, and I'm here to kill some bad guys," or whatever his that. voice. Not, Treehouse would never. Let okay, that so happen. how does his voice go? What is Link's voice? Everyone wants Link's voice. What's his voice, Pear? No, Excuse I, me. No, I actually, <laughs> I actually as, as I said, I don't necessarily need Link to speak. I just feel like his environment and how do you want Ganon to talk? So is so dead without a little bit of voice acting, and the cutscenes are just so. They they're so chopped up with these these kind of text segments. Nothing is wrong with going into a store and getting through menus quickly. I think yeah. that it gets annoying. What are you buying? It gets annoying when you have to wait for characters That's to awesome. tell you. Hey, to be, yeah, the, to, that guy never got annoying. Yeah, but how sad the would it be if you didn't have that that voice symbol? <laughs> no, like Link doesn't need to speak. And like Metroid is got a great some example. Got goods on sale for uh, you, stranger. Other, other M wasn't a problem just because of voice acting. It was that they turned a silent protagonist into a chatty caddy. Yeah, right? oh, like, she was like that since Metroid Fusion. You just were skipping through the right. text. Other M was a problem because narratively they suffocated a very powerful, like, strong female character I, and, and made her into something that wasn't allowed to use her guns unless a guy told her she was allowed to. I, that was a, There was a litany of, of issues with that game. Voices were the least of its concern. Yeah. Not the baby. But, but, like, Link doesn't actually say stuff in the games. Giving him a voice is not necessary. All the other characters are saying stuff, and it does um, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like it does get old after a while. It was. It would be nice. It's to goofy. Give. I, okay, I give. I think you give them more sound effects. But I don't think if Ganon came out and he was like, "I'm Ganon. I really gotta find this 
triangle of power. Well, I hope he's not the, the well, freaking what's his, okay, so crocodile what's his voice? hunter. Well, boy, I'm getting it. <laughs> hey, why does he talk so like this? So what's Ganon's voice in, in the next Zelda game? You want you want him to have a voice? I want to hear it. Well, I, I'm not going to be the don't voice of Ganon. I don't think Come he'll on, be the voice I'm not going to be the voice You're of Ganon. You're taking the easy way out, though. Uh, but I do want to say that... <laughs> no. Um, I think Ganon should talk, and I think there are lots of voice actors who can do a good job. And by the way, there are lots of really good Japanese voice actors who sound like scary dudes. They should get Dave Fenoy to do it. I do just want to point out that I think that the animation thing is the bigger issue here and what's happening while you're reading text versus voice acting itself. And I think that's the key issue we've been arguing about for the last five minutes. And will continue to be that way unless they are on the hook to actually create animations of characters speaking. But I still think that regardless of what they lose on the animation front, the way Zelda integrates music into that experience, Nintendo does things with music and sound that punctuate performances like very few games I have ever played yeah. manage to do. Even in Triforce Heroes, I'm seeing different different shades of personality. When you visit Madame Couture's and you have that, ooh, 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 that, yeah. that that thing going in the background, it's just funny and fun to listen to. Or you have moments like at the end of A Link Between Worlds, spoilers, when you had a, you've had a few years, when you're fighting Yuga hey. Ganon and you get the uh, the Zelda melody, the lullaby comes on, and it's just like this goosebump m- driven moment of you like, oh my goodness, this is happening. Yeah. This is so good. And I, I think they play that card very well. I agree with all that. I think and the they, animation needs to catch up to I mean, where still they do with that. that. We spent yeah. the first 40 minutes of the show talking about a Zelda game we're playing right now, and yeah. at no point did any of us go, really wish they had some VO in there. Dude, that text is but so that clever. that one doesn't need it. I, I feel Why, because like it's top down? Yeah, it's, very, it's a very different world. It feels very classic. When you're trying to build these epic experiences, like I want to be able to walk through a town and hear people talk to each other rather than you know having to stop and go bloop, bloop, bloop. You don't and hear then... people talking to each other in Animal Crossing. Like, well, I just, I'm just trying to find other Nintendo game examples to kind of... No, that's, no, no. That's no, Animalese they speak. That's a real... But you don't hear them. No. You don't, they don't do anything. Well, they're just like... Nam, 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 Think of think of RPGs. There are a lot of RPGs where you will go into a town, you see lots of NPCs, and you can talk to them manually. And what they the info they give you is throwaway. It's the developers trying to make the town be interactive by letting you talk to people. And what the people say has no impact on the overall quest. Yeah. Those characters should just be talking as you walk by. You hear them talk. You don't have to. You don't have to stop and hit A to speak to them unless you have, you know, you, you need to do something. I like that, so you, uh, you want a line of dialogue from somebody being like, I sure wish I had a slingshot so I could get that thing down from that tree. That'd be great. Nah, and like then that. every time you walked up, they said it again. They don't need to, they didn't, they don't need to be idiots. <laughs> they are the idiots, problem. though. They they will be. But that's the problem. Every, every Most of the people in, in Zelda Towns are idiots. There's the guy that runs around with like a two-by-four and he's just like, ah! <laughs> Like, there's a lot of really dumb well, characters. Yeah. But that guy doesn't need to talk. I love he's lately, building um, something. If, if I could derail us slightly, I love lately that in uh, Triforce Heroes, there is a... Uh, doesn't need to talk. He's building the, something. The, the, did, did you hear? I'm not going to give you a free pass. Oh. Away. <laughs> that doesn't make right, no... All right, all right. Come back. Come back. I do like that kids <laughs> have become the vehicle for instruction in the past two Zeldas. Yeah. For, for example, in A Link Between Worlds, uh, the kid says, oh, you see that statue there? If you go touch it, you can save. Don't ask me what saving means. I'm just a kid. And he just walks ahead like they, no one they, tells uh, me anything. And there's two they kids They do that in, in this one, too. They, they do, do that, too. The They're like, oh, you can take a photo. He's like, what's a photo? I think that started in like Link's that. Awakening where they, they, there were kids in the town that would mm. say things and they'd just be like I don't really know what that means they're like if you press all the buttons at the same time you can yeah. save I don't know what buttons are it's in yeah. Triforce Heroes too yeah. take yeah. a picture of a, of a blue bird and yep. it's like yep. I, don't, I don't know what a picture is alright yeah. so let's move on last question uh, from good friend of the show Charles Gatson and it says hi guys a few weeks ago Jose tweeted out an article with email excerpts from Yash Terakura I hope I'm getting his name right a co-developer slash mentor of the late Satoru Iwata I was surprised to see many of the details regarding regarding what actually transpired between Atari and Nintendo back in the day, as well as some of the details regarding Iwata's involvement in some games that have been washed away by the stream of time. What do you guys think of the industry at large, uh, what do you think the industry at large, excuse me, can do to ensure Nintendo history and game development history in general is preserved for future generations? It seems these, there are hundreds of great stories to be told that will be forever concealed because of the inherent secretive nature of video game development. Rare, Re- is a great Rare Replay is a, is a great example of, mm. you know, a developer bucking that trend. Yeah. I mean, there, un- there is footage of unreleased games in there, quite frank discussion, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, games that probably would be really hard for people to play now, playable on a new platform. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's something the, the, the community can do is to create these 
overcome some of these licensing challenges, right? Like look at Nintendo and Pokemon Company to come together and to preserve some of these games. Yeah. Um, I, so, yeah, I, Goldeneye, great example, right? Like I that one the, is not in there. The shame yeah. is yeah. We, we do hear, um, at least in our jobs, we hear a lot of stories about things that we just also can't tell mm -hmm. quite frankly because some of the details we hear are either off the record i think he's more talking to the fact of some of the things that happen behind the scenes that sadly you know we're, we're kind of the gatekeepers who have to sometimes not share that stuff because someone's career is hanging in the balance like we try to find smart so, ways to break stories around certain topics because it's important and because we can't well, it's less about the games it's less about what transpires the stories the i think question it's more is? about stories transpires development history i think it's a mm. range of things it's i think not it, just i think if thing. you you look at a book like game over mm -hmm. um which was written a very you know what, over over a decade, mm -hmm. fifteen years yeah. after this N sixty four era, yeah, we're talking uh, yeah, here. Yeah, N sixty four era, way after the NES sort of uh, evil dictator monopoly Nintendo, who was over upcharging people on cartridges and all that sort of like Japanese businessman thing, overseeing the whole industry, monopolizing everything. Uh, those stories came out way later. But we got to hear them. We got to read them. It took a while. It took 15 yeah. years for us to read them. But I think that'll happen. Um, like you mentioned, Rare, they're just, they're, they've been like pretty cool about tweet. Like they were just tweeting out Blast Core screenshots the other day that had this like uh, giant sort of scorpion robot that never made it into the game. But they're like, here it is. Like it's been long enough. Like here's a little thing. And yeah. I think that like eventually a lot of those stories are going to be told. Some will never be told, obviously. But I think some stories will be told. I think it's just a matter of the stature of limitations. It depends on the story. You know, we get cool opportunities to talk to some developers, and we try mm -hmm. to find interesting stories to bring to people, like we do. But sometimes there's also there's a smaller subsection of the audience that cares that much about it, and right. some just want entertainment and the game to play. That's true. So and it's it, tough for us yeah. to find the fi the right line. I think the main reason why you don't see that much stuff is because it's a very young industry, right? I mean, think about movie making and how long it took to get the stories on the greats. And like, I mean, just think of Hitchcock and his relationship with with his leading ladies, right? There's right. some nasty stuff obviously went on because some didn't ever talk to him again. And like, we don't know what the truth is and the truth will never come out on those stories. But we're talking about an industry that is, you know, over a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. Here you have video games, still very, very young. Not not an industry with as many stars as, as movies, right? Where, right? where serious writers will write these biographies and try to dr dig into the lives and creations of these, these, um, these fil uh, creators in, in gaming now. I think it'll take a couple of years. Gaming is already one of the biggest pastimes now. It's like, it's, you know, what people do now. The next generation after us, you know, our kids, when they grow up, gaming will be the predominant pastime, yeah. even bigger than movies. Um, and I think we are at that cusp now where they some of the creators will be real stars. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you will get those stories. I think people will care more. People will do more digging and you'll get more stories. Like yeah. That. And I mean, you kind of alluded to this, but this is a, a, an industry where information is controlled. But one yeah. day that information won't be controlled. And that's the yeah. days that people will tell these stories. And there are some fascinating stories out there, some really cool things, some behind the scenes stuff. And it's just up to us to keep pushing to and, try and find that stuff. I mean, we, we've had... Uh, uh, a moment I feel on this show when we had Julian and Julian Eckbrick and talking telling us you know the history of Factor 5 on this show telling us about an unreleased Star Wars game that was practically fi that was finished and that he's they now independent right? Right. and he's right. gone he independent that. and he can do that or, or, but or, I'm, I'm, and not to toot our own horns I'm just saying we've had that moment yeah. and hopefully we'll get more you like, can, or, or Perrin Kaplan coming on the show yeah. and talking about uh, the time they flew a plane over a field and dropped a bunch of Pikachus like, which is a story I'd never heard of before yeah. I think there's ways for that to come out I think you're absolutely right mm -hmm. uh, um, but but the industry also has to change a little bit. We are the gaming industry is not like the film industry. You no. know, for better or for worse, there, there's some terrible things about the movie business too. But a Steven Spielberg can go out and say anything he wants, right? Like he is an established creator, someone who is at a studio like you know Activision, Ubisoft, EA, or even smaller studios too, cannot go out and say anything because no. that person is a spokesperson for that developer. They're basically full time. And when they do and, say something, they can lose their job. Yeah, and it's it's not. It's not a uh, the way gaming is set up is very very different, right? I mean, remember the deal with it, guy, right? He did lose his job. No, and um, there was a guy at Nintendo who lost Adam, his job. Adam yeah. Orth. And so, oh, you're yeah. talking about Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, yeah the deal with the guy is Adam Orth. Yeah. He's making um, a drift now. Yeah, and like we will see. Maybe gaming will never be like like the movie business where you know directors are a little bit more distributed 
um, between the different right. companies. But yeah, I, I think part of it is just the attention. You know, but it's it's. It encourages me to see that there are fans that care, even if it's a subset. I mean, we care, and hopefully, you know, five years from now, ten years from now, whether it be museums, whether it be some book, whether it be something online, whether it be documentaries, podcasts, whatever, it will be an awesome moment to see and hear more of that stuff as time yeah. passes. Because even even now, we see it with like the toy industry. I watched a documentary about Star Wars toys, yeah, mm -hmm. and how it was great. Um, yeah, I forgot what it the, was the one called. just recently, right? Yeah, yeah but it was about um, yeah, it was basically about uh, the Kenner stuff. Yeah, it's, Kenner it's, getting the license, just oh, working man. their butts off because the movie came out in May and realizing if we're going to have a product, we need it done and in stores by August for Christmas. Otherwise, yep. we're not getting in on this. And them <clears throat> rushing to market to try and get it, and all the experiments they tried along the way. Yeah, how it was frowned upon if you made something that wasn't in the movies, but sometimes they had no choice. Yeah, yeah they made, they made up a droid these factory that like there was no droid factory in the original Star Wars right. or in any of the well, movies. Well, now there and is. then <laughs> they had one. But anyway, th this is all stuff that'll come out with time. Charles, thanks for sending that question, and thank you for listening to Nintendo Voice Chat. We went a little long today. I apologize for that, uh, Brian and Pear, because you guys are both busy. But thank you for listening to Nintendo Voice Chat. We are a weekly show on IGN. We're not the only show on IGN. Uh, Brian is. A a member of Beyond. That's we right. have other shows here as well. Great stuff for you to check out. We also uh, have a lot of Halo 5, Triforce Heroes, like you name it. Yeah. There's a lot happening on the site these days. What a few other things folks should be doing. No, know we about. can uh, you can find our shows more easily now. So if you're on our homepage, uh, whether desktop or mobile, there's now uh, a, a navigation element that says shows. So you can directly jump to the NVC or the Up at Noon or the Beyond page and watch the latest full episodes or clips. Yep. As long as Jose submits the video request. Oh, wow. Well, I'm mm -hmm. getting heat. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Then, uh, you can also leave us feedback yep. by uh, heading over to iTunes and leaving us show feedback right there or by emailing us at mvc at IGN.com. Now, we have some more question block questions, but we have to go we'll try and bring the segment back next week. So, if your question didn't get read, don't worry. We're trying. Um, and lastly, you can find us on Twitter. You can find the uh, brappiest Brian Atano at. Agent Bizzle. You can find the, uh, I don't even know what to call you. <laughs> awesome, beautiful human being. You can find him at. He runs a company. You can't, you can't uh, turn that down. You got to go with it. GM Guap. You can find the Guap with all, the GM with all the Guap on Twitter at. Jabba underscore the hut. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm a beautiful human being. Uh, pair. Uh, Salacious Dash Crumb. There we go. And you can find <laughs> myself, Jose underscore Otero, on Twitter. Thank you very much for listening. And we'll be back next week with more Nintendo Wisha. Oh, shoot. See ya.